In today's YouTube video, we will be discussing whether or not we should be trading news. Does this go for every single news event? Should we trade it or not? And if we should trade it, how should we trade it? In my opinion, I think that we should trade news events. And in today's video, I'm exactly going to explain to you guys how and when you should be trading news events. I will be providing you guys with proof that you should be trading news events, why you should be trading news events, and also how we should be trading news events. I am always telling my members that news events are only speeding up the process of price action. But a lot of people are wondering what I exactly mean by that. I mean that whenever we look at the charts, the charts are always trying to tell us their own story. It's trying to tell us a little story in which as traders, it's our job to figure out what the charts are exactly trying to tell us. And they are trying to give us multiple indications whether the price is about to go up or down. And news events, they don't change the outcome outcome. All that news events are doing is speeding up the process of price action. And price action is human behavior translated onto the chart. Price is always drawn towards liquidity. Price is always based on market structure. To give you guys some proof, I have three examples for you guys. The first one being the Luna crash. Over the past year, we have seen three major news events. We have seen the Luna crash, we have seen the FTX crash, and we have seen the most recent ETF pump. And very often people say that the price moved in a certain direction because of these news events. Now let me tell you that I predicted all of these moves to happen on the chart and I didn't know anything about the news events. Obviously I knew that the ETF was coming, but I didn't know that the FTX crash was coming or I didn't know that the Luna crash was coming. But even though I didn't know that the news events were coming, I was positioned in major shorts on the Luna crash and also I was positioned in no single spot position at all during the FTX crash and I was actually holding one more swing short position and in this video I'm going to explain to you guys why I knew that this would happen and why the news events were only speeding up the process of price action but didn't change the outcome because we already knew what the outcome would be before the event even happened. Over here on the chart we see the weekly chart for Bitcoin and we can see that the Luna crash was taking place over here with this massive drop to the downside and what we can see over here in the weekly is that we swept the buy set liquidity of the previous all-time high over here right now that buys and liquidity sweep resulted into a local sweep of this high over here as well that local sweep resulted into this first crash to happen over here the first crash happened and by opening and closing this weekly candle beneath this higher low that brought us to this higher high we shifted structure on the weekly time frame now by shifting structure on the weekly time frame it was the first major indication to me that the bear market started so all we had to do at this time was wait for a bearish retest and what we were seeing afterwards was that bitcoin started to form a rising wedge a rising channel over here so we had that weekly break of structure followed by this very weak bounce to the upside all right and by bouncing this week to the upside bitcoin was also creating a bearish three drive pattern towards the upside drive one drive two and then over here drive number three that third drive resulted into another test of that higher low trend line and quite often the third third test of that higher low trend line results in a breakdown and this was something that I was indicating obviously this is something that I was anticipating but I couldn't know that this would happen for sure so what did I do I went onto the lower time frames which I will show you guys right now the four hourly time frame which on the four hourly time frame as well Bitcoin was in a local downtrend all right and what we were seeing over here is that Bitcoin was in a local downtrend and then we were forming a invalid falling wedge pattern so we were in a local downtrend and we were forming an invalid falling wedge pattern. If we look at the volume over here, we can see that while this falling wedge was being formed, that the volume was not dropping lower and lower and lower like it should be. No, it was actually going higher and higher and higher. Now, if you guys have watched last week's video on Friday where I talked about trend lines and falling wedges and how to trade them, you know that the volume has to be dropping lower and lower and lower instead of higher and higher and higher. And I was seeing that we were forming a falling wedge that everyone was talking about, but I knew that it wasn't a falling wedge, a valid falling wedge. So I knew that this was a trap. So as soon as I saw this breakout towards the upside with a very small spike in volume as well, and we were going into this supply
buy area over here on the four hourly time frame, I knew that Bitcoin would um, reject over here and it would probably drop lower. So what did we do on this push towards the upside over here? We opened four swing shorts. My members that were here at the time can confirm that we were in big swing shorts of four different coins. And we saw a huge crash afterwards. And eventually it was the Luna event that was a trigger for this crash over here. But at the end of the day, as you can see over here, there were so many indications that we would see a crash. We had the weekly break of structure. We had the uh, rising channel, right? With volume dropping lower and lower. We had a bearish three drive pattern towards the upside. We had an invalid falling wedge that was forming near the higher low trend line. And we were going into a bearish supply area. Five huge indications that the market would crash. At the end of the day, many people are blaming it on the Luna crash, on the Luna event. But I could already see it on the chart. And this was example number one. The second major news event was obviously the FTA crash. And what we can see over here is that Bitcoin was trading in a very clean range, in which the mid range was getting respected very well over here and over here. And we're also seeing that the quality levels were getting respected very, very clean. Now, the first thing that I was noticing before the FTA crash happened was this sweep of the buy side liquidity, in which this breakout turned into a deviation of the mid range, right? We fall back beneath it, and this was a confirmed deviation, all right? After that confirmed deviation, we took out the sell side liquidity, right? And Bitcoin started ranging. Now, after it started ranging over here, we were seeing a bearish manipulation phase in which this was accumulation. We were seeing manipulation over here. And where was this manipulation going? Into the mid range. So we were seeing accumulation, manipulation. And we know that after that manipulation phase, we should see distribution to the downside if it's a bearish PO3. And what we can see over here is that besides the mid range, we were also seeing that the value area high was at the exact same area. And this was not only a deviation of the mid range, this was also a deviation of the value area high. And this is what we call a filled auction. After a filled auction of the value area high, as long as we don't reclaim the value area high, we should see a breakdown of the value area low. So we were seeing this daily PO3 pattern into the mid range after this bearish sweep and deviation of the mid range and value area high. Now we've gone to the lower time frames. I was spotting another bearish PO3 in which we have another range over here, as we can see. And then within this bigger PO3, as we can see, we were seeing a lower time frame PO3 pattern as well. Accumulation, manipulation, distribution to the downside. So what did we do? We knew that this mid range would act as massive resistance. So we opened swing shorts and we were in no spot positions at all. And we were anticipating this FTX crash to happen. Now, once again, many people, they blame it on the FTX event. I blame it on the charts. I knew that the charts were looking bearish and that all we could do was look for shorts and be careful with our spot holdings. And what we did, what did we do? We let it in spot orders at much lower prices, anticipating this dump to happen. Our spot orders got filled at the bottom before we pumped towards new highs. Now for the third example, we're talking about the ETF pump and it's the most recent pump that we have seen over here and many people say it's due to the ETF. Once again, yes, the news is a trigger, but it was already on the charts because what we can see on the charts that we had a massive accumulation range over here in which we saw a deviation of the range low, right? Followed by a reclaim of the mid range, deviation beneath the mid range, test of the range high, and we saw a confirmed breakout above that range high area. Now after that confirmed breakout above that range high area, the price tested the range high once and it tested the range high twice. Many people thought that we would break back inside of the range, but they were shorting the high time frame support. They were shorting a potential bullish breakout of a bullish re-accumulation range. And as long as the range high of the accumulation range holds, you always should expect higher price. You always should expect expansion towards the upside. And that is something that is not due to news. It's something that was trying to be told to us by the charts and many people failed to listen to the charts all they were doing was listening to their emotions and now they are blaming this pump on the etf news now let me tell you something it's not due to the etf news it's all due to the charts it was already on the charts before the etf hype even begun and that's something that a lot of people don't realize but once you start realizing that every single move is already on the charts before the news event even happens you are really one or two steps ahead 
ahead of 99% of the traders because 99% of the traders still think that either news events should not be traded or they think that a lot of moves that happen on the charts or whether they get stopped out or not or whether they are wrong on the markets or not they all blame it on the news events now let me tell you something news events are actually our biggest blessing it's actually our biggest friend while trading because all that they do is speed up the process of price action but once we start realizing that we can already predict what's going to happen on the markets once we start realizing the charts are actually just trying to tell us a little story and our job as a trader is to figure out what story the chart is trying to tell us that's where we really get one step ahead of 99% of the market and that's really where we can see massive gains on the market something that has helped me a lot with trading news events is by not using market entry because obviously we have smaller news events like CPA data release FOMC meetings and those kind of news events can also be traded but what you should do in order to avoid getting wrecked during those news events is instead of using market entries try to obligate yourself to always always use limit entries and one of the biggest things that we should learn is to always enter where other people are getting stopped out and those are the kind of people that blame getting stopped out on news events but what we do instead of getting stopped out during those news events we either buy where people are getting stopped out of their long positions or we sell and short where people are getting stopped out of their short position so by understanding price section and liquidity and market structure we are one step ahead of those retail traders that are always getting stopped out those during those news events instead we predict where they are getting stopped out we predict where the market should be drawn towards next we let the news event speed up the process of price action and we buy the stop losses off so to sum up we always buy the stops of the retail traders we don't let news events influence our decision making we are patient traders we see news events as our biggest friend and our only job as a trader is to figure out what the chart is trying to tell us day in day out now if you guys do understand the concept of this video if you guys do believe in the three examples that i've been giving to you guys let me know in the comments down below i hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you guys do have any questions after watching today's video also feel free to let me know in the comments down below i would appreciate a like and a subscribe and i'll catch you guys on monday's video ciao ciao